Hello and welcome again to this edition of Phi TV. I'm your host, Brad Swanson. We are once again coming to you from Florida's legislative session in Tallahassee, Florida. We're just a few blocks from the Capitol today. We are joined by one of the most avant-garde, forward-looking, tech-forward uh, senators in the process, Senator Jeff Brandis from St. Petersburg, Florida. Welcome, Senator Brandis. Thanks. All right, so, so you're a veteran. Um, you're chairing uh, justice appropriations. You're the vice chair of criminal justice, but you are Mr. Tech. You are always very tech. Obviously, with our members and our viewers, we're always looking forward to technology, but we're going to run through a bunch of amazing issues that are transforming Florida. And we're going to start with mastery-based learning. What are you doing in that space? Tell me about that, Bill. So our office really thinks is there's one big idea in every area of policy. So in education, we think the future really is competency or mastery-based learning. Kids are used to playing video games. How do we make education look more like leveling up? Mm -hmm. Everybody's used to spending all this time in their seats, but when you've learned something, the ability to move on, and technology really offers that ability to kind of transform education from this uh, sage on the stage model that we've been using for the last 100 years mm -hmm. to more of a coaching model that I think the future really wants, uh, and that's what we call mastery-based learning or competency-based education. Really excited to lead in this uh, area. So, so is this about installing a new curriculum or allowing for a new curriculum across the public school yeah, it's really system. it's really about how do we use technology to allow students to move at their own pace mm -hmm. uh, and in and a, and a different way than we have traditionally done today basically everybody kind of in the class learns at the same pace mm -hmm. um, this allows technology to play a role so that kids can move up at their own pace when they're ready so the kids that are that are running a little bit behind can can catch up um, and the kids that are already ahead can continue to move forward. Yeah, I mean, I, I know with, with both my kids and, you know, personal experience is is that Montessori kind of conversation back in the day was like, oh, if your kids are great at math, they're going to be able to just keep going. They don't right. have to stop even though they're in second grade, they might be at fifth grade. Is it, it, but, but this is using computers to be able yeah, to do that. Utilize technology. Let kids level up at their own pace. Right. That's really the fun one. That's, That's exciting. That's exciting. All right. All right. So, so, so you've got every, you know, PTO board coming to you and, uh, I mean, you're literally dealing with everybody in the state of Florida on that yeah, one. Yeah, it's exciting. Yeah, cool. All right, so let's move on to uh, autonomous vehicles. This is a space that, that you've owned. You and I have worked together in the mm -hmm. past on this. What's going on in AV? Where are we going now? So Florida's a leader in the country in the deployment of self-driving um, vehicles, and that, that it's a really exciting discussion. We have a number of companies that are deployed here. We have Voyage that's down in the Villages. We have Ford and Argo AI that are down in Miami. We have a company called Starsky Robotics that's operating semi-tractor trailers out of Plantation. Florida. We have housing developments like Babcock Ranch and being look, built around this. This was because you passed the law to allow this the first steps yeah. in this space. So, so, so we're like several years down. So, so it's really exciting. We're continuing to kind of refresh our laws, kind of take the latest and greatest from what we've learned around the country. This is really more about updating definitions than allow, and allowing more flexibility in the state. But Florida really is a leader. They love the, our climate. They love that we don't have snow. Um, we love that we have some of the best uh, lane lines in the country, and that's really something that's very important to the self-driving community. So it's exciting to be kind of on the leading edge of this technology, working with the major players in the nation. And really, it's, it's more of a discussion about what's the future of mobility look like? And we believe that the future is shared. We see this with the rise of Uber and Lyft. We think it's electric. We see this with the lies of essentially every auto manufacturer right. getting involved in the electric space. And we think it's also some, uh, we also think technology and self-driving will play a major role in the future. Well, I've got to give a shout out to the Florida Department of Transportation. I mean, they are literally one of the absolute leaders in the country. And and they, you know, it wasn't like you had to, to drag them along. They were already leaders. And so so with your advocacy and, and their, you know, continued leadership, they, they continue. And Governor Scott and, and now Governor great DeSantis. Partnership. Yeah, that and, and really everybody loves being down in the city of Miami. And so that's been a really a great highlight for us is to be able to, to highlight a city that's really hard to operate in. I tell people it's a double black diamond city to, right, uh, to right, drive around right. in, right? That's it a is perfect description. It is yeah. not, a, not an easy <laughs> city to get around in. And so they love the, the credibility that they get from operating in right. a major metropolitan area that's that's known to be difficult. First and last mile, first and last hour is what we used to yeah, you know, call exactly. Miami, but uh, it's getting fixed. Okay, so criminal justice reform, what's going on in that space? So one of the largest areas of of challenging policy in Florida is probably criminal justice reform. Florida has 
86,000 people incarcerated in its, in its prison system. Um, and, and we frankly are, are, you're starting to see the wheels of justice begin to slow because the healthcare cost is eating the, the budget of the criminal justice system. And so we think we've got to reduce the prison population smartly, um, but we think we can do that through diversion, through transition, and then ultimately fixing the criminal punishment code. So it's been a strategy that we've been working on for a number of years. We've got a new attorney general. We're really excited to work with her, but we think it's one of the big ideas that we need to fix. And Florida really has been, what's well, one of the areas where I can't say Florida is a leader on, um, but it's one of the areas of greatest growth opportunities for Florida really is to be a leader in criminal justice reform. And we're starting to see both the House and the Senate come around to that idea. All right. So, so micro mobility scooters. What's a micro mobility scooter? What is that? Yeah, so Senator it's, a, it's amazing to think that this whole area of public policy or this whole area of transportation really wasn't even available to us 24 months ago. But now we've seen the rise of Lime and and uh, all, all these different bird, all these different types of scooter companies come online and offer micro mobility options. So micro mobility is basically you think of a, of, a, of a scooter or a scooter with a seat or basically anything that goes under 20 miles an hour that's shared via an app, much like an Uber or Lyft, but with these micro mobility devices. Right. You see them in your major cities, so, yeah, so you're so just catching the law up to allow for these. Yeah, things, so Florida law arguably doesn't allow for those today. So we're really revising that law, moving the whole thing forward, and allowing cities to really figure out what this means to. Them. Well, I can't wait to go rent one of those in the city of Tallahassee or Miami or St. Petersburg, where you're from. Um, okay, so healthcare telehealth, huge to our members. It's right. our technology that, that gives a bandwidth big enough to project a doctor into someone's home. W where do we stand with that, and where are you taking that? So Florida has 21 million people. It's going to have 25 or 26 million people by 2030. So how do we how do we really help with the healthcare um, space? space and, and what does that really involve? How are we going to meet the needs of 26 million people in the state of Florida? And a portion of that has to be telehealth. It's not going to be long before your insurance company is buying you a watch, telling you, hey, look, if you wear this watch, we're going to reduce your healthcare costs, but allow you to access physicians, nurses in real time, um, and, and they'll be able to have some biometric information about you. So it's exciting to see this whole space um, evolving in the space of telemedicine, but it's really going to have to be a key way that we meet the healthcare. And right now, Florida's challenge. law, you got to go to the doctor, you got to walk into the hospital, yeah, you, you got to see we're them really, there. We're really behind the, the curve as it comes to telehealth, but it's an area where Florida has to become a leader in. All right, so 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 just a few of the small things Senator Brandis is playing, and you, you always say, we're looking for the next big thing in every space, and let's focus on that. It certainly looks like you're doing that here. All right, so, so for our viewers, the biggest question, it might not be the biggest, but it's my biggest question, when you're not saving the free world by tackling all of these problems for the future, what does Senator Brandis stream? What do you watch when you're trying to take your mind off it? What do you flip um, on? Listen, this is going to sound really wonky, but I'm an addict for TED Talks. Um, and, and as you can see, if, you, if we're going to cover a lot of different areas of public policy, I'm always listening to TED Talks or always listening to podcasts. You know, anytime I drive up here, that's what I'm working on. I love it. I love it. Well, well next time we'll have a black stage with a little red logo and you just you could just like, you know, pontificate. It'll be great. Love to. All right, Senator Brandis, thank you so much for coming on Fi TV. We love hearing about your future and forward-looking, you know, policy that you always bring to the stage. Anytime you've got a new idea, please come back and join us on Fight TV. Appreciate it. Thanks so much. Thanks, Senator. Yeah. That's all the time we have for today's episode. Please hit us up on our social media feeds. Thanks for tuning in. And as always, make sure you tune into cable and stream something new. For now, have a great day.